Hey everybody, welcome to episode six of What Not to Miss with Chris. As you know by now, my goal each week is to put out quick, relevant data that explains the why behind the what in order to positively impact the freight community. Last episode, I shared a hall map and explained why knowing how large uh, and how much freight is moving in and out of a current market uh, can drastically affect not only capacity, uh, but rates as well. On today's episode, I chose to share a month-over-month -month look at U.S. custom imports uh, broken down by industry type. Uh, so the way this map works is you look uh, top left to the bottom uh, right here, biggest to smallest. So uh, distribution services, retail trade, manufacturing, non-durable goods, all some of the top um, industries here as far as um, uh, customs imports are concerned. So retail trade obviously showing um, some of the highest percentage growth on a month-over-month -month basis given that we're basically already sitting in peak here and it, it's, um, that's, that's fueling some of the demand here. Uh, so why are we seeing growth in almost all the represented industries and what does that mean for volume and capacity? To start, I think a robust, above average, and extended peak season plays a significant role. Um, shippers like Amazon, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, um, you know, all, all, all the big players here um, have the power to create, create demand for an extended period of time. For example, uh, just this week, we saw Amazon do that with Prime Day. They extended it from one day to two. Uh, the role these large retailers play, coupled with uh, resilient consumer confidence, is continuing to bolster volumes and demand. Uh, this can be seen in the sustained elevated number of ocean import bookings, which should essentially continue to drive above average truckload volumes uh, completely throughout peak. Okay, so now let's touch on how this is affecting capacity. Um, I actually just read for the first time ever, tender rejections um, have been above 25% uh, for six weeks straight, meaning that one out of every four tendered loads are being rejected by carriers. Um, carriers are able to reject freight like this right now uh, due to the huge offset in supply and demand. Um, obviously, the biggest factor affecting this offset is above average volumes due to an increase in consumer spending money on goods instead of services, um, unlike they typically would if you know COVID wasn't around. Um, some other factors revolve around monthly new truck orders just barely uh, peaking above replacement levels um, and elevated average length of haul across the country decreasing the amount of loads a driver can, um, can turn quickly. You have um, low driver recruitment uh, despite a huge need. And honestly, I think for carriers, there's a lot of fear surrounding the idea that the current situation that we're experiencing right now is very similar to what we saw uh, in the second half of 2018, moving into 2019, where record volumes fell after enormous equipment investments were made by carriers, um, which ultimately set up an incredibly soft market in 2019 um, which led to a number of different bankruptcies um, and misprojections um, for carriers. I personally don't see this type of scenario repeating for a number of reasons, one being um, low inventory levels currently um, that are going to take a long time to replenish. But to be honest with you, that's a much longer conversation for another day. Um, ultimately, I, I really hope this information has been beneficial to you as always. I'm happy to have a more in-depth conversation regarding these topics, so please feel free to reach out to me, um, whether LinkedIn, email, or, or call me directly. Happy to have those conversations. And until next time, uh, I'm Chris Seeds, and this has been another episode of What Not to Miss with Chris.